two of the biggest confusions and misconceptions designers have around them is that first, they are mandatory for every project. And second, developers will rely on them entirely to build your designs. And that is why designers have stressed so much about them because they think it's the secret to unlocking Super Saiyan mode as a UI designer. Now I'm here to tell you that both are myths and I want you to understand how grids actually impact designers and developers. By the end of this video, you will become the Kanye of grid systems. I am a god. Everybody says, who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was, a god. All right, so here's a quick history class on some of the key events around UI design grids that will help you understand this entire topic. The internet was officially made public in 1993. Now between 1993 and 2007, Designing for the web was fairly simple to an extent. I know this because I started designing and building websites in 2004. At the time, we used a standard 960 pixel grid that was suitable for practically every web project because the only device we viewed websites on were the same size desktop displays. Now, since majority of websites had a fixed width and layouts were quite standard, developers could easily build them without the need of following a grid system. It is also important to note that HTML and CSS, which are the languages developers use to build web pages, were also in their infancy. If you're a developer, you'd probably remember tables were not our best mates. Not this one, but this one. Now in 2007, something quite significant happened. In the context of grids, why do you think everything changed in 2007. Jobs. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. Here it is. <laughs> Jobs decided to drop the iPhone and complicated everything. For the better, of course. Designers need to find ways to manage and design consistent layouts that would respond gracefully across all different size devices. Now, as there was no standardized way to manage complex responsive web projects, in 2011, two Twitter developers released Twitter Bootstrap, a CSS framework to help developers build web projects more efficiently. I would say it was the most adopted CSS framework to build responsive websites at the time. This CSS framework had a very important grid component to it. Here's a snapshot of Bootstrap version 1.1.1, yet one of the very first iterations. Here, you can see developers would actually define their HTML marker with the following semantics that follow a design layout based on how many columns they would have. If you needed 12 columns, you would use the class names span 12 columns. As you can see, it was very important for designers and developers to be on board of how the designs were going to be built because developers would actually match their markup with the designs. Now, if today you are still struggling with managing complex UI design projects, you should definitely check out Zeppelin, which is the sponsor of today's video. Zeppelin's the collaboration tool to hand off your designs in Figma to your development team. Now, when it comes to managing more complex projects, instead of using grid systems, some modern day companies use the concept of spacing tokens to standardize the process. Now, you can think of spacing tokens just like a font style or a color in your design system. Here, you can see a design on the left and on the right hand side, I've also marked out some of the key spacings or the consistent spacings we have within this design. As you can see, we have a consistent 16 pixels on the left and right. And then we also have a consistent eight pixels between some of the titles and some of the text. Now, what we can do with Zeppelin is that we can go and select our designs. We can import it over into Zeppelin. Now, once it's over into Zeppelin, you'll see that your designs have popped up. You can click into your project. I can click into my design. And I, as I hover over my designs, you can see that we have 16 point spacing on the left and right, 16 point spacing on the left and right down here, and also around the button as well. Now what we can do is utilize spacing tokens. So if I hit back onto my dashboard, head over to style guide, I can head down into my spacing and layout section. I can go ahead and add a spacing token. Now, as you can see, I can hit add first token, and this will create a token named spacing dash extra extra small and the value be four points. Now, if I go ahead and add another token, we can see that it's extra small and it increments by four. And this is a great way to create consistent spacing tokens for your entire project. So let's go ahead and add a couple more tokens. And if we go ahead and pop back into our dashboard, clicking into our designs, and when we hover over some of the measurements, you can see that next to 16 point, we now have a reference, a key reference called spacing dash M. 
If we scroll down to the actual button itself, you can also see consistently we have the label spacing dash M. Now, if you want to learn more about Zeppelin, there is a link in the description. And with that said, let's head back into the video. Now in 2015 and onwards, as time went by, web apps became more dynamic and more responsive and people demanded better responsive websites. Designers and developers realized working within strict grid systems can be very limiting and hard to work with. For example, here we have a 12 column grid, but what if we wanted to make the sidebar this wide? With grid systems, we are limited by the constraints. We would either have to make it three or four columns. There's no in between. With the advanced technologies such as HTML and CSS, which are the languages developers use to style a web page, grids slowly became less and less relevant. Now, developers have been moving away from frameworks like Twitter Bootstrap and adopting more efficient processes and solutions. So during this time, CSS upgraded to CSS3, which introduced Flexbox and CSS Grid. Browsers like Chrome, Firefox, and even Internet Explorer upgraded their render engines as well. So nowadays, many modern day apps aren't built with frameworks like Bootstrap anymore because it can be limiting. They don't need to explicitly state how many columns are needed, how wide are the gutters and margins. Instead, using CSS Flexbox, developers can build highly responsive web pages and layouts by simply defining how wide a container is, and then they can easily position items anywhere inside without any hassles. From what I can see, Twitter doesn't even use the concept of grids in their own development anymore either. So in the end, you may be wondering, what does this actually mean for designers? Well, first, grids are not mandatory. So grids, without a doubt, are great to keep consistency in layouts, and I still use them in some of our projects. But they are not mandatory. And when you actually understand CSS Flexbox and CSS Grid, you realize grids aren't actually that relevant anymore. Two. So when are grids relevant then? So grids are still re relevant today and can help a lot of designers maintain order in the chaos of UI design. So for the designer, it can be a great tool to keep in your workflow. With that said, as you become more senior, you might drop it for some projects as well that don't require such structure. Now on the flip side, there are some projects out there that still use CSS frameworks that leverage the concepts of grids. For example, Tailwind CSS is a very popular modern day CSS framework that leverages grids. This means any developer or team that uses Tailwind would totally appreciate a design file with grids being utilized. So how can you make the most of grids? Now the best project outcomes always happens when designers and developers work together. My suggestion would be that whenever you start a new project, talk to your team of developers and ask them, are there any constraints that you need to keep in mind in context of grids? Also ask them, are you using any existing CSS frameworks? The more designers and developers collaborate and work together, the more you'll start to understand how to make key decisions on your own. And you might not even need to watch any more of my videos in the future. I'm kidding. Make sure you like, subscribe, and also turn on that damn bell notification. Now, with that said, let me know in the comments below, do you use grids in your current workflow? If you like this video, make sure to gently smash that like button. And for the diehard fans, make sure to subscribe, turn on the bell notification, and I will see you in another video very soon.